Well, hello everybody and welcome to Mondays with Mark. A happy Mondays with Mark. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. But a happy Monday. You know, that's, you know what that is. Anyway, uh, I'm so glad you're here. I've looked forward to seeing you. I had an incredible week, y'all. Unbelievable week. I was at... <clears throat> GMA week, I went to the, uh, GMA week is the no longer GMA week. There's the Dove Awards. And did y'all see it last night on TBN? I didn't watch it. I, I was there. I didn't need to watch it. And, um, but um, uh, maybe you did. Hey, everybody coming in. Barbara Nelson, Ray Dowie, Cynthia Anderson, Cheryl McAllister, Marty Thomas, Gail Deering, hello from Westmoreland, Tennessee, Gail Deering, let's see, let's see if I can post that, there you are, hello Mark from uh, Karen Calabresi, I met you, I met her, at, uh, wherever we were a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> but I remember meeting you, uh, hello Brenda Camp, hello Trisha Walter, hello DK, hello everybody, what an incredible Fun week. So anyway, the Dove Awards. I don't know if you saw in the afternoon. They have these afternoon pre-telecast, pre-main show awards. And um, that's where they give away the majority of the awards. And they do it pretty quickly. And so I was up for one Southern Gospel Artist of the Year. It was me, the vocal band, and a few others. Er probably Ernie Haas. And I can't remember all who. But... Um, so I knew I wasn't going to get that. So I'm sitting there waiting and the ca got the camera on me. And if you saw it, it's on my YouTube channel below. Oh, by the way, please subscribe. If this is your first time tuning in for Mondays with Mark, hit subscribe. And everybody else, please share the video. It helps get the broadcast out and bigger. So please share, please subscribe. So I'm sitting there and they start to say, um, you know, the win or the Dove Award goes to the Gaither Vocal Band, and I start screaming, this is rigged, this is rigged. So son, so that night, I was all prepared to scream, it is rigged again for the national telecast, because I thought that would be very appropriate. And so they called my name, and I went, oh, crud. It, uh, I went, oh, yay, really, what a thrill. Got up there, and I really hadn't prepared a speech, but I thanked everybody I could remember, and I didn't forget to, uh, to thank the Lord because he has been so good to me. He's been giving me reward or award or no reward or none of it. What else has been going Oh, the Gaither Vocal Band Reunion. So I went from the Dove Awards to Melissa Brady's Women's Conference Thursday night. And while I was there, they were rehearsing in Greenville. All the guys had got together. I, I couldn't be there because of the Women's Conference. I had to sing it. So... Um, I arrived uh, Friday, was it? Yeah, Friday. And um, we did a concert Friday night, and man, the wall of sound. For all of you that were there, I know, you know, it was an incredible wall of sound. And um, and then we did that. But it was so much fun to watch Bill Gaither. You know, all these people that for all these years have gone through his group, he's been the one remaining thing but people have the revolving door, but everybody is co who's come through that revolving door still loves Bill Gaither and thinks the world of him. And if they don't, well, they should. There may be one or two that don't, but you know what? They didn't show up, but we didn't miss them. But I won't say who they were. Uh, and it wasn't Steve Green. Steve Green could not be there because he uh, had another... Uh, uh, booking that was booked way before Gaither. So anyway, let's see what else. Is, oh, the cruise, please. The cruise is filling up. We're going to go on a cruise to the Caribbean. Mark Lowry Spring Fling Cruise. Please don't miss it. We're going to hope to have, we're already over 200. We just want to get about 300 so everybody can get to know each other. We don't need that many. If we get 400, great. But we can all still know each other by the end of the week, hopefully. And uh, it's going to be phenomenal. The Martins will be on it. The Ball Brothers, who are so funny. I don't know if you follow them on Facebook. You should. Taranda Greenbean will be there. And, of course, Stan Whitmire, my pastor, Brett Jones. And we're going to have some times where we can all just sit around and talk about God. 
and let him answer questions and let's just talk about things. And just, it's going to be a wonderful time. It's my first cruise and it's the only thing I will be doing next year uh, as far as any kind of touring. I'm not touring at all next year. But uh, the only thing I will be doing is the Mark Lowry Spring Fling Cruise. So go to marklowrycruise.com and you can learn more information. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, the bobblehead. I got it. Oh, wait, what else? Wait, wait, wait. There's more than just the bobblehead. Where is it? Well, where is it? Oh, there it is. Eight dollars. Eight dollars, y'all. Doesn't it look like me? Eight dollars you can have with this sitting on your dashboard, and I'll be judging you while you drive down the road. You need to order that at marklowry.com slash store. Hello, Rhonda Morton. All you coming in, Paula Shepard. Saw you in the Martins. Saw the Martins at Dollywood. That's cool. I love the Martins. I can't wait to have them on our show, too. Uh, oh, Tori Taft. It's time for our... We haven't had her in a while, and I've missed Tori. Here's our foreign correspondent, Tori Taft. Hi, this is Tori Taft, your foreign correspondent on the ground in Belleville, Tennessee, at the big annual web school craft show. 120,000 people come into our town of 450 and it's crazy. And I'm working a register, which if you know me, is a little dangerous because, you know, math. But anyway, I'll show you a little bit more about what it looks like out there. I'm going to work the cash register and eat my corn. I'm helping out at the Bell Buckle Cafe booth where we're frying taters, also known as curly chips. They are absolutely delicious and you can smell them from around the block. Look at that. We're selling barbecue too. And when it gets around lunchtime, they line up all the way around that corner. Can you blame them? They are delicious. This is so much fun. We look forward to it every year, even though it is kind of nuts, what with 120,000 people in town. But there's cool, whimsical arts and crafts everywhere. And the weather this year was great. It's always the third week in October, but sometimes it's really cold and sometimes it's not. Last year it was burning hot, but it's so much fun. And they come from all over. So next year, Think around the third weekend in October, you might want to make your way to Bell Buckle, where your kids can jump around and you can eat fried Oreos for crying out loud. Because <laughs> remember, everybody needs a little Bell Buckle and corn in their life. Oh, I love I love those videos, Tori Sense. If you've never been to Bell Buckle, you got to go, y'all. It is amazing. They have the uh, Rust Taft weekend. They just finished that, and I heard it was great. Uh, let's see what else I want to tell you tomorrow night, 6.30, on Reba Rambo McGuire's Facebook page. The, the River will be back on. You know, the River took last week off because of the Dove Awards. So the River will be back. I'll be watching at home. You don't want to miss it. It's live on Facebook. A lot of music, a lot of praise and worship, a lot of good times. And Russ's movie, Russ Taft's movie is coming out, y'all, October 30th. I'm going to Franklin, Tennessee, to the theater up there to uh, see it with Russ and Tori, and it's going to be like a little premiere for them. But October 30th, don't miss this movie. It is incredible. It is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. Hey, I've noticed this week also uh, that the billion-dollar jackpot, it's at $1.6 billion. Have you bought your jackpot ticket? And if you do, which you might, Colleen has. Colleen was going all over town with her 80, 90, 9,500-year-old mother. I forget how old she is. She's old. And she still buys jackpot tickets for the big jackpots. And they're going around town trying to get one. Did you know that the chances of becoming a saint or having identical quadruplets is better than winning this jackpot. You have a better chance of becoming a saint, I guess in the Catholic Church, or having identical quadruplets. That's why I don't ever invest in the jackpots. Not that I have anything against it. If you enjoy that, you know, I don't enjoy throwing my money down the toilet. It's like playing at the Vegas, you know. I can go right in there and put money in the toilet and flush it and don't have to go to Vegas. 
I go to Vegas for the shows. I enjoy the shows. Are they all ready to meet Candy Christmas? Find out what she's been up to, that sweet darling. I love Candy Christmas. I've loved her for years. She used to sing, you know, she was the pretty black-headed girl always in the homecoming videos with her hand in the air and worshiping the Lord and sang, she sang, uh, 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 little flowers never were we, no, no, what it, she, anyway, she sings at the end, it's a song her daddy wrote about the flowers, what is it, y'all, I had a brain fart, don't turn 60, all right, here's Candy, I love her, I want you to get to know her bridge ministry, here she is. You don't sing anymore? You what know, is that all about? You know, I don't really know. I don't really... Okay, so the bridge ministry has kind of taken over my life. And when I get invitations most of the time, it's to hear about what was happening under the bridge. And I think that people... We live in a serve-oriented generation. People don't want to send a check anymore. They want to get their hands dirty. They want to be under a bridge. They want to help people. Yeah. And so they want to know how how we got started and, and I think apply it to their own lives. And so I think it's that not that they don't want to hear me sing. I think it's that um, they're more interested in what I have to say. And so it's just a... It's When's just the last a, time you sang? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I don't understand that. We're going to get to the bridge in a minute. Okay. Because that's why we're really here. I love Candy and all, but she's got an incredible <laughs> ministry. I came to the bridge ministry's banquet that you just had. When was this? September the 27th. And she had Laura Bush. Mm -hmm. And I got to sit by Laura Bush. Thank you for that. You're you know, welcome. it dawned on me after I left. I said, she could have had anybody you wanted to sit by Laura Bush, and you let me. I wanted you to sit next to her. And it was so uh, such an honor. I didn't know what to say to her. I was speechless, really. So, okay, this guy's really funny, but he's brilliant. And so I, I think you probably had, like, the highest IQ of anybody in the room. Oh, please. <laughs> and you could make good conversation with our ex I didn't lady. know. I yeah. didn't know what to say. But she was very friendly, and very I didn't gracious. want to bother her. And yeah. I... You know, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, the bridge ministry is incredible. One day, how did you get from singing? You're raised in the Hemp Hill family, a singing family, gospel mm -hmm. music family that's unbelievable. Your brothers have gone on to build the best bus company in town, Hemp okay. Hills. Yeah. I mean, the, the, we I've leased buses for them for for years. And you quit singing. And tell me how the bridge thing happened. Because there's a lot of ladies probably watching, because they say my audience is mostly women, uh, like my age and up, that are thinking, what am I going to do with the rest of my years? Because, right. you know, we don't yeah. die. 100 years ago, we'd be dead by oh, now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But now we're outliving our usefulness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, okay, so about singing. I love to sing, I didn't mean to stop singing. Um, but I went through a time of depression. I was severely depressed um, for, I don't know, a couple of years. And uh, I think that sometimes um, depression is genetic. And so I was like a third generation, um, you know, sufferer of depression. Really? And so I went through this really, really dark time. And so... Did you get any medicine for it? No, I didn't take medicine. Do you now, think that's not good? Well, uh, no. Uh, here's a disclaimer. Don't try this at home, okay? Yeah. This is me. Th right. This is what I um, I felt to do okay. because I wanted to find the source of my pain, okay? Right. And so m my pain was, had I been successful enough, um, had I made enough records, gotten enough Dove Awards or w whatever, and so those were the things that were, were troubling me. Hmm. But when I found homeless people under a bridge, their troubles were, if it rains tonight, I'm going to sleep wet. If someone doesn't help me eat, then I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to eat out of a dumpster, literally eat out of a dumpster. Hmm. And so um, this just evolved over time. There was a time that I tried to go through the motions of going out and singing and, you know, put a smile on your face because you got to make a living, right? Right. But eventually the bridge <clears throat> and what we were doing for the poor here in Nashville kind of eclipsed 
uh, my singing career slash ministry, whatever. And so I have no regrets. I, you know, singing is wonderful, and I, I love to sing, and I love to hear singing. And mm -hmm. you were amazing at the fundraiser. Uh, unbelievable. Mary, oh, did you know? So wow, you're a genius. But anyway, um, so... So I just found these people, and I found a way to help people in a tangible way. And I've Didn't always... Didn't you say it started with uh, some uh, gumbo? Pot of jambalaya. Jambalaya, that's what it was. Yeah. I love jambalaya. It's yeah, one of my favorite I do things. Too. Thank so you. you just made a big pot of jambalaya. And what caused you... Someone said something to you. You said... Uh, that caused you to say, well, I can make a pot of jambalaya. Yeah. Okay. So I was severely depressed and I weighed under 100 pounds. And so I went to this friend's house. This friend invited me over um, to see this house that they're building. And there was a lay minister, just an older gentleman that said, hey, I roast hot dogs for homeless people. Do you know that Nashville has homeless people? And I said, well, you know, I, I guess I never thought about it. And he'd seen me on the Gaither videos and I was you know, vibrant and alive and excited. Right. And here I am thin and frail and severely depressed. And he said, well, why don't you go with me under this bridge where I'm roasting hot dogs? He said, can you cook? And I said, yes, sir, I can cook. Mm -hmm. He, I guess I was so skinny he thought I couldn't cook. Right. You know? <laughs> and I said, I was raised in Louisiana and I can make jambalaya for any size crowd. Wow. And so I made a pot of jambalaya and I met him on a Tuesday night under the bridge. And I met these gracious, grateful, broken people. Uh, and, you know, okay, so, so I think in my career one of the frustrations was that Okay, so I, I, I was Southern Gospel. I sang Southern Gospel music. And, and contemporary is the, the hip thing, right? So if you go to one church and you're too Southern Gospel, then you're not hip, right? Okay. Okay, so or if you go to a different church and you've, you've, you've gotten a little hip, then you're not Southern Gospel enough. Right. And it's like, it's, you've got to be the right flavor, you right, know? Right, right. So I get under this bridge, <clears throat> and they don't care what flavor. Wow. They don't care my name. Yeah. You know what they care about? Right. Does what you have work for me? Yeah. Does your gospel? They don't care about the jargon. They don't. They don't care about any any labels. Does your gospel work for me? Will it help me? And so when the rubber meets the road, did you find out it, a lot of your gospel didn't work for them? Uh, that you had believed. Have you had to change? Okay. So so. Do I did I change my beliefs? No, um, you know because I I believe God for great things and um, you know Philippians four nineteen my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory and Mark eleven twenty four what things whatever you desire. But you got to get it down to the basics, the cross of Christ, right, and His deliverance for their life. Right. For God so loved the world. Yes, he did. Somebody loves you. Yes. Somebody cares about you. Yeah. Somebody cares that you're cold and hungry. And somebody's gonna be See, back here next Tuesday I night. I guarantee you. So you gotta you gotta just take all the fluff away, you know, all the jargon we've learned, and just get it right down to the basics. Somebody loves you. How does someone get? How would someone start what you in their hometown? Every homeless people are everywhere. Everywhere. Is it? Is it? Asking how did you get started in gospel music to ask this question? Because when I get asked that question, there's as many ways into gospel music uh, as there are people, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no one way. Mm -hmm. Is there a plan? Is there a first step that someone could take? Say, I want to be, I'm, I'm retired. I've got all this free time. Uh, how do I start this? How do I start my own bridge thing? Uh, first of all, you have to care. Second right. of all, I think that um you have to look around you and so so let me preface this by yeah. saying there are a lot of ministries in Nashville who feed only homeless right and if they're the working poor or they drive up in a car and they live in in um, the projects or whatever they're not going to help them oh really you're not homeless go away this oh. is a homeless ministry so for me 
I serve people who live in the projects. I serve people who are the working poor. Um, I just serve hungry people. If they're hungry, they're welcome. If they're welcome. hungry, they're welcome. I don't care if they came walking, riding a bicycle, or driving a car. Yeah. If they're hungry. And so, so I, I put no limitations and no restrictions. Have you ever run out of food? Okay, do you really want to know the answer to that? Yeah. So, um, I've run out of food. But I kept dipping. I've had the volunteers call me back and say, look, we're running out of food. We still have 100 people in line. What do we do? And we start praying and dipping in the name of Jesus. And he, now, my Bible, hold on, my Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he could feed 5,000 with some loaves and fishes, he oh. can do it under that bridge. And I've seen him do it. I'm going to tell you something else I've seen. You're not going to believe this. Call me nuts. Put me in a straight jacket. Okay. But I have seen God multiply Christmas gifts at Christmas time. When we did not have enough Christmas gifts, we prayed on them, and everybody that left got a Christmas gift with some left over. That's the God's truth. I'm telling you the truth. Wow. He still works miracles today. But you just got to be in a, a place. place where He's performing them. Well, yeah. And, and just. Okay, so some people say we're a faith-based based organization, you know, but they got a billion dollars in the bank, right? right. Oh, yeah. We're a faith-based operation, and, and it is literally faith. Yeah. And if God doesn't provide, we have to shut the doors. But 14 years, we've still been going, and the lights are still on, and we have lots of food and clothing and toiletries and things that we're giving to the poor. And your website is right down there. It? it will be when I've done editing this. Okay, thanks. And uh, so if you want to donate to the Bridge Ministry, here's what I've learned about giving through my 60 years on this planet. Whenever I see a TV preacher say, plant your seed, I check out the soil. Before I plant my seed, I check out the soil. Mm -hmm. Don't throw your seed on Interstate 45 and expect <laughs> tomatoes. You better check out the soil. And so don't just because if someone's got an 800 number means you're supposed to plant your seed, right? right. This is good soil. Thank you. The, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. I love this ministry. And Jesus did. Jesus said when you've done it to the least of these, he, and on Judgment Day, he really isn't going to ask us, did you invite me into your heart? He told us what he was going to ask us. Did you feed me? Did you clothe me? Did you visit me while I was in prison? Tony Campolo pointed me out, that out to me one day, and it freaked me out because I always thought when I got to heaven, he would say, why should I let you in? I said, because I invited you into my heart, which I did when I was 14. 14. But Tony said, no, he already told you what he's going to ask you. So can I tell you a story? Yes. So I have people say, well, you know, what about the people that take advantage of the system? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so what about what about people that have plenty and they just want to hand out and whatnot? Yeah. God still uses that. So there was this young there was this young guy that came to the bridge and he told me that he had AIDS. And he was extremely thin and covered in sores and he was this really so oh I prayed over him. I cried over him. Every time he needed money for medicine, and this was in the early days, and I was just so naive. I was just, you know, whatever you need, I'm here. Jesus yeah. loves you. Yeah. So I'm giving him money for his drugs, his, you know, for his, for his age drugs. And so after a while, then he didn't show up. And so I thought, oh my, he's, he's died. Uh oh. Oh, he died of AIDS. Yeah. And oh, I just wept and cried in prayer and I just pray and oh God, I hope he was saved. You know, I hope I did my part. Well, a couple of years later, here he comes back to the bridge and he's so fat and he's married and he's driving a car and he came back to the bridge and, and I, I barely recognized him. He's right. so big, you know. And I said, where have you been? I thought you died of AIDS. He said, oh, Miss Candy. Uh -huh. He said, uh, every night when I would lay down at, at, at uh, my head on my pillow at night, he said, I would think of all the lies that I told you, and you believed me, and you prayed for me, and you uh -huh. loved me, and it hounded me. He said, finally, one night, I got out of the bed, and I gave my heart to Christ. He said, I want you to know I've got a job. I'm working for a church up here in White House, Tennessee, and I've married a wife. And he said, I came back to apologize to you and to tell you because of all those lives and you, uh, lies and you loving me still, 
I gave my heart to Christ and wow. I've turned my life around. So God uses yes. all of it. Even my ignorance yes. he'll use. Yeah, so. let people take advantage of you. <laughs> I, I was care. wondering about that. Yeah. And you know what I believe you're doing, which I is the challenge in my in my mind and in my heart. It's a big challenge for me. To love without an agenda. Mm-hmm. To love without an agenda. See, I've always thought I need to love you so I can win you. Mm-hmm. But I believe my job is to love you, and along the way of loving someone in their life, in their life journey, you'll get an opportunity to tell them about Jesus. That's right. And but you don't have to cram him down their throats no. right, right up front. No. Just love. But you remember when you first met me? How I was, I was so appalled. J.D. Sumner smoked cigarettes. Do you remember that? I remember. Remember that? I was such a little legalist. Mm-hmm. And look how God changed me. Hey, all of us. All of us are on a journey. But you know what? God loves everybody. Yes, He does. It is the love of God. It's the goodness of God that brings me into repentance. It's not our legalism. The Lord loves... What scripture is that? It, uh, I, Donnie McGuire quotes that one all the time. Yeah. About it's the goodness of God that brings us... Ah, oh, I love that. Yeah. Why didn't we get that sooner? I don't know. I think, though, sometimes, Mark, God, in God's infinite wisdom, did he make me depressed? Oh, no. But did he use it to bring me to the place where I could love other people who are broken and at their lowest point? Yes, he used it in my life. And so every impediment is a godly gift. Every every situation that you can go through is a godly impediment to lead us on our journey to be able to love us. The steps of the righteous yeah. are ordered by the Lord, even the steps you hate. And I believe, and I could be wrong, I'm a recovering fundamentalist, <laughs> but I could, listen, uh, I even believe the days we sin, the days I wish I could go back and relive, I'm not saying they were ordered by the Lord in the sense that God, I'm going to choose on this day. Mark Lowry's going to sin the worst sin he ever. But I believe that when I did, God was right there by my side watching it all. And not in judgment, but in I'm going to win him back. I'm going to be here with him when he falls. And I'm going to pick him up when he's ready to get up. That's who I think this God is. I know he is. I believe that. I love you. I love you. All right, now before we go. Just sing one co- verse and chorus of Consider the Lilies for me. Oh, just for are me. you kidding just me right me. now? Oh, I, now just, you're going to make me have a hot flash. May I introduce <laughs> May I introduce you to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars and tells the sun I don't know if I can do Wind that. Wind shine. Yeah. And kisses the flowers in the mornings with dew. But he's never too busy Listen to, this. to love me and you. Sing it, I'll harmonize. We have a heaven. With eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love, he really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider. And then you will know. Honey, you still got it. <laughs> please, sweet. please don't let that gift fall by the wayside. Thank you. Just because, don't thank me. It's a gift. <laughs> you did nothing to earn that. Thank him. Listen, I'm just got to, Beverly's, let me tell y'all, y'all may not know this, but when my mother died, she didn't go to heaven. She jumped in me. <laughs> And now she comes out in me when, like right now, she's coming out. All my friends will say, okay, Beverly, get back inside. Because whenever I say, you know what you need to do? Because she did that all the time. 
and it used to tick me off. How do you know what I need to do? But but now I realize she did that just because she really thought at the time, this is what you need to do. Not to hurt me, but to help me, right? Thank you, that's right. But I didn't that's take it that way. Do. But here's what you need to do. All right, tell me what I need Don't to do. Don't ever go anywhere again and talk about the bridge without singing that song or a song because trust me they will all love it and who cares what style see when you get our age you don't care what they think first of all it's none of it's none of our business what anybody thinks about us that's right you ever heard that yeah i've loved that i don't know who said it first but it's none of your business what anyone thinks about you don't worry about it let the children play you live and you sing honey Thank i'm you. telling you you're one of the best, yes. and I would hate to think that that is the last time we'll ever hear that voice. But if it is, it was right here on Mondays with Mark. <laughs> you heard it right here. <laughs> okay, so this is the warehouse. Okay. This is where this is a sorting station for uh, the children that we serve. We serve 2,500 children a week, and so we serve them uh, little cans of this is vegetable soup and um, macaroni and cheese and things like that. And we have volunteers who come and, and bag all the groceries for the children, oatmeal, uh, fruit, all types of snacks. And so we give them enough to eat, uh, let's see, 12 meals on the weekend. And so we have volunteers who come. Uh, yesterday, for example, we had a group of homeschool children who came and served. We have civic groups, civic or organizations, church organizations, uh, every Thursday, we have a busload of handicapped children who come and they bag groceries to be able to give back and to serve mm -hmm. other children. So these are some of the grocery bags that are already bagged to go to be delivered to the children, already bagged here, mm -hmm. and that's 2,500 bags there. Wow. So, uh, so forgive the, the mess. These are the pots and pans from last night. We were under the bridge on Tuesday, so that's last night. These are brand new toys, not used. Brand new toys that we've already gotten wrapped for Christmas. We're preparing for Christmas. That's At good. Christmas time, we have Santa Claus come, we have Toyland, and we give away somewhere between, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000 brand new toys to and you have what do you do that under, under the, bri the bridge under the bridge yeah uh-huh these are brand new pants that we sort in sizes and we give away brand new clothing items our motto here under the bridge is that if i wouldn't wear it i'm not gonna give it if i wouldn't eat it i'm not gonna serve it so Good we job. give brand new clothes we don't take used items we have hookups with um, organizations that have clothing that they'll send us brand new brand new clothes so this, this is, is the toiletry fast. station and we have people and that come and bag the toiletry items anything from toothpaste deodorant okay you don't franchise this but you've helped people we help people so there's a bridge ministry in augusta georgia under okay. a bridge there All right. and so they serve as many people as we do and then we help a, a, an organization in california in detroit michigan um, we just help people. Get so started. anybody who wanted to get started yeah. could come get help. Yeah, sure. You'd help them. I'd help them. I'd She'll help, help them. you. <laughs> so these are uh, okay coats. We have brand new coats, and I'm looking up oh, right here. Carhartt. Do you, are you familiar with Carhartt? No. Okay, so Carhartt is a uh, a work grade for people. Uh, who work out in the weather, so it's heavy duty work okay. clothes, and they send us coats. So we've got uh, brand new coats getting ready for winter. But here's the method to the madness to giving away the coats, okay? Yeah. So um, we don't give away coats when it's cool, we give away coats when it's 32 degrees or below. Oh. Because if we give coats away when it's just cool, then many of them have addictions that are screaming inside of them. They'll sell it. So they'll sell the coat to feed the addiction, and then when it is really cold, they won't have a coat. Won't have a coat. Yeah, so we wait until they really need a coat. Well, you've but, figured a lot out. Oh, trial and error. Yeah. So we have 9,000 blankets right now getting ready uh, for the winter months, and we give those out every single week, even when it's now, Have you figured out how to make, if something happened to candy, is this going to keep going? 
I hope so because it's birthed by Christ. It's not well, I know that, candy. but I mean, if you've got it set up to where it could go oh, on yeah. without you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I do. Yeah, you don't want it to be too candy centered. Then, if candy's no. not here, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> but I hope candy's here for a long well, time. Thank you. That's sweet. I love you. I love you too. Oh, well, that's it, everybody. Wasn't that great? What a fantastic ministry Candy Christmas has. She went from being uh, the lead singer in the Hemp Hills to being a regular on the Gaither videos to starting a ministry under a bridge in the middle of depression. Are you depressed? Feed somebody. Try it. I, that was her path to health, just looking outside yourself looking beyond, uh, but also get, get medicine if you need it. I know Candy didn't use it, but, you know, there's medicine for that. Don't let anybody condemn you or say you don't have enough faith. You wouldn't need your brain medicine. You know, tell them if they didn't have enough faith, they wouldn't need their next open heart surgery. Don't let anybody condemn you for taking your medicine. That's the time we live, and God allowed us to be here. And if you need it, if you're depressed, if you're suicidal for goodness sakes call the suicide hotline number i wish i had it right now uh I, I need to put that up so i can have that whenever i think of it don't don't do that listen if judas had just waited a day you know judas he betrayed the lord and then he felt so guilty he killed himself if he'd have just waited a day he'd have heard the angel say go tell the disciples and peter and judas that he's risen Listen, resurrection could be tomorrow. Don't miss it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Um, call the 800 number. Google suicide hotline and call it, all right, if you're thinking about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed tonight. Didn't Candy something? She can still sing, and she must. <clears throat> Beverly was telling her the truth. That's my mother. Anyway, um, I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. And no, I, next week, Guy Penrod will be my guest. Guy Penrod, don't miss it on Mondays with Mark. Make sure you subscribe and share this video to your YouTube channel or wherever you share your social media. Take care, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye.